Good morning. Today's reading comes from the book of Acts, uh, chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When we had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the lectionary has given us uh, two very interesting stories on this sixth week of the Easter season. The first you heard Anne read, read for you from the book of Acts, and then this story from the Gospel of John in Jesus' active ministry. Listen now as I read the Gospel according to St. John. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. They say good news travels fast, and that is certainly true these days, especially. Perhaps the biggest feel-good story of recent weeks was the birth of the royal baby. Within minutes of the birth, millions of phones buzzed with news feeds and social media postings. Now, there was a time when the town crier would uh, ring a bell and shout out, hear ye, hear ye, and post a bulletin on a post piece of paper, and then the next day's newspaper would carry the story, and within a few days, everyone who cared would know the good news. Locally, the news that our famous neighbors are going to sell the house and move away traveled super fast. In case you don't know, Governor Cuomo and his girlfriend Sandy Lee, uh, Sandra Lee, own that house next door and are going to sell and move uh, to the city and to Long Island and Albany, various places where they have residences. Well, that story didn't even break, and my son sent a text the evening that the story broke, and emails started flying from all of you the next day. I'm not sure whether it is good news or bad <laughs> that uh, it's been kind of fun to have uh, the governor of New York as a neighbor. Uh, kind of fun when the governor remembers your name. But it was a hassle at times as well, so I wouldn't necessarily call it good news. But it certainly was news. Our two Bible readings are stories of good news traveling fast. These are certainly stories of good news. They're stories of lives changed for the better because of an encounter with the good news of Jesus Christ. In one story, a man had an encounter with Jesus of Nazareth and he was healed physically. In the other story, a woman had an encounter with Paul 
a witness to the risen Christ, and she was healed spiritually. And there's another common link between these two stories. They don't both take place next to water. The first pl story takes place next to a river where a group of women had gathered, probably to fetch water, but also to pray. The gospel story is set at the pool of Bethsaida in Jerusalem, where people who were sick gathered in search of healing. So both stories remind us of the natural draw of water. On this Memorial Day weekend, people are heading to the water for recreation and fun. I know we went for a boat ride yesterday. But water is also a place people go when they need to meditate or reflect on life and find inspiration and even healing. Long walks along a seashore or standing and watching a waterfall can take us to a deep place of contemplation. Water and prayer go together. Water and healing go together. Water is life. We've already gathered around the water of the font to baptize little Adelaide. So let us now go down to the water with Lydia and Paul, Jesus, and this man who could not walk. And let's walk along the river and sit by the pool and let the Spirit move us, heal us, and challenge us. The story of Lydia in the middle of the book of Acts tells us a lot about the early Christian movement in southern Europe. Philippi is in Macedonia, one of the republics of what is, we knew of recently as the former Yugoslavia. And in the first century, it was a Roman city, and there would have had, they would have had temples to the Roman gods and other trappings of Roman culture. It was a place of commerce, and Lydia was a businesswoman. She was a merchant who sold purple cloth. My wife loves, uh, my wife would have been one of her customers, I'm sure. She loves to support women-led businesses, and purple is her favorite color. Luke, the author, tells us, uh, is that, tells us that Lydia is a worshiper of God. We're not exactly sure what that means, but we know that she was a Gentile. She was a Roman citizen. Bye, Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> She was a Roman citizen. She probably spoke Greek, but she was interested in this God of the Jews. It seems there was a gathering down by the river of like-minded people, and the Apostle Paul was in town for the weekend, so to speak, and on the Sabbath wanted to find a place for prayer and worship. And he heard about the gathering by the river, and there he met Lydia. Lydia listened to the good news Paul had to share about how his encounter with the risen Christ had changed his life. You remember the road to Emmaus story of Acts chapter 8. We don't know what he said to her, but we know it had an impact on her. Luke says the Spirit opened her heart, and she wanted to claim that truth for herself. She and her whole household were baptized right there in the river. This story is one of, is one of those where those of us who baptize infants get our biblical authority. You know, our Baptist brothers and sisters believe that individuals should wait until they are old enough to choose for themselves, and that is fine. But here Lydia and her whole household, which very likely included children, were baptized together as a family. And there's a similar story later in this same chapter where the jailer in Philippi had his encounter with Paul in his own jail, and he took Paul home with him where he and the Bible says and his whole family were baptized. So for us, baptism is more about the family than the individual. It is about our physical family, of course, but also our spiritual family. That's why we introduce the child with their whole name, including their surname or family name, but baptize them only with their given name or Christian names. Their last name represents their earthly family, if you will, and their Christian names are given at their baptism or christening, representing their heavenly family. Our other story takes us back in time to the early phase of Jesus' ministry. He traveled from Galilee down to Jerusalem, and along the way he had his encounter with that Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4, another story around water. 
And then while in Jerusalem, he came to the pool of Bethsaida. John gives us a description of the pool, including how many pillars were around it. It's a beautiful place. I've seen an ancient pool in Jerusalem that they believe is the pool where this took place. We're not told why Jesus went there. Perhaps he was drawn to water as a place to meditate and pray. Or perhaps he knew there were people there in need of healing and compassion. It was a place where the sick and disabled gathered. They came to have company and to support one another. They came to be near water. They came to be healed. You see, there was a legend that when the water stirred, they believed the Spirit of God was present and the first one in the water would be healed. Well, this one unnamed man had been there every day for 38 years but was never the first in the water because he was physically disabled. Jesus asked him the strangest question in that context, do you want to be healed? You could just feel the temptation to be sarcastic and say, no, I've just been sitting around here for almost 40 years because I have nothing else to do. Well, he resisted the temptation and explained that he's tried, but someone always beats him into the pool. Well, Jesus ignored the legend of the pool and simply say, said, get up, take up your bed, and walk. <laughs> the man stood up, healed and ready to get on with his life. The last line of the story is the note that this took place on the Sabbath, which then became a problem if you read on in the chapter. The religious, uh, religious authorities tried to get Jesus in trouble for healing on the Sabbath because it was considered work. And Jesus ignored that nonsense and told them that he was going to do what God called him to do, especially on the Sabbath. Well, these stories are both good news stories, aren't they? They're stories that reveal the life-changing power of the gospel, which, by the way, literally means good news. The word gospel literally means good news. The gospel of God's love revealed in Jesus Christ is good news for those in need of healing, both physical and spiritual healing. It's been five weeks since we celebrated the good news of Easter, and these stories come to remind us that what that good news means for each one of us, whatever our need, whatever our station in life, God's love is good news for us all, and these stories show us how the news is good. In Lydia, we see someone who had it all. She was wealthy. She had status. She had a community. She even had religion. But she needed more. She wanted to make it personal. She had all the physical comforts of life, but she needed spiritual healing. She longed for a relationship with God. And Paul showed her, showed her that the risen Christ was ready to give her life meaning and purpose, just as Christ had done for him. And then at Bethsaida, we see a man who had nothing. He had no job, no health, no money. You might say he had no life. But then he met Jesus. Jesus saw his need and made him whole too. He healed his body and gave him back his life. But notice Jesus told him to take up his mat and walk. In other words, Jesus challenged the man to take care of himself now. After 38 years of depending on the kindness of others, even to have something to eat, Jesus said, get up and get going. You can go now and not only take care of yourself, but help others too. These encounters with the risen Christ were good news for this man and this woman so long ago. God met them in their place of need and made them whole. Do you need good news in your life today? we stop and think about it, we, we all do. We may have physical or emotional pain. We may have it all, but still feel a lack of purpose or direction. The good news we have to remind ourselves of this morning is that in Jesus Christ, we have a spiritual companion, a healer, a guide for our future, an example of how to live. Well, if you need good news, Come to the water and spend time with God. 
This summer, you'll probably find yourself by water for rest or renewal. As you experience the healing power of water, remember the healing power of God's love in Jesus Christ. Take it in and soak it up. And when you leave the water, remember to take up your mat or lawn chair and get back to work. There are many people in our community and world who need the good news that only you can share. Amen.